Hey guys, and welcome back to another Conan Exiles video. Today we're on the Exiled Lands, on the Aqueduct in Map Square G9, building a base designed for PvE gameplay. So, without further ado, let's get started. Firstly, I started off by of course building out the base plate onto the aqueduct itself using ceilings and pillars. Now I do have mods running whilst I'm building this, however you can 100% build on this aqueduct without the less building placement restrictions mod and of course the other mods that I'm using. You may find building to be a little more finicky, however I got the idea for this build from seeing a very similar build on the aqueduct on an official PvE C server. It's definitely possible, and as for the other mods I'm running I won't really be using them, I'll be sticking to entirely base game and DLC assets. I chose to use stone brick mainly for this build, as it's a manageable option on the resource cost front, and it also contrasts quite nicely against the much darker stone of the aqueduct. Once I'd finished the base plate on the aqueduct, I then built out a small extension on the northern side. On this platform, I'll be building down a line of pillars and creating a small receiving platform on the ground level, and this is where I'll place an elevator to access the build. There are other options here, you could have a staircase that coils around the leg of the aqueduct and then onto the aqueduct itself, but I wanted a bit more of a streamlined design. The downside of the stairs as well is that aggressive NPCs could follow you up the stairs, and there are plenty in the nearby area, so the elevator is also a safer option. I built a small 3x3 platform on the ground level, protected by a door and fences to stop nosy people climbing onto the elevator platform, and then I placed the elevator to reach the base itself. Next I started on building up the base itself. Now this part can really go in whichever way you want it to go. You could leave it completely open and have the natural aqueduct structure work as the walls of the base, which is a nice option, but I preferred to build up retaining walls around the base one tile high. If you're not familiar with PvEC, those servers have set hours where PvP is enabled, though you still can't raid other people's bases, so an open design like this is quite safe on both PvE and PvEC servers. However, you can of course design these walls however you like. You don't necessarily have to follow this design, I just did this because I thought it was cleaner, and it prevents people from falling off the aqueduct. Once I'd finished the perimeter walls, I then built up some buildings onto the base plate. The design that inspired this build was very open plan, and had no real rooms or buildings on the base, so I wanted to change that in this design by constructing a few different buildings onto this base plate to make things feel a bit more busy and varied. I also really wanted to take advantage of the verticality of this design, so the builds will be of varying heights to give players some really nice views over the highlands. I also added a gateway to the northern side of the build, so you can access the rest of the aqueduct leading up to the tundra. The highlands is a pretty nice base location of course, there are plenty of enemies and resources around to provide to the players living in this base what they need, but having access to the tundra and the northern side of New Azagarth is of course a great benefit to have. Finally, I added roof pieces to the northern gateway and fences to the perimeter walls, just to stop any nosy people scaling the aqueduct to climb into the base. I also added roof pieces to a couple of buildings in the base just to make them look more attractive, and then I added another small building next to the two-storey one on the southern side. This building does slightly hang off the aqueduct, but I'll use roof pieces to make this look visually supported underneath the ceilings.
Finally, when the shell of the build was done, it was then time to of course furnish. Approaching the aqueduct, I've lit the build with wall and hanging braziers, and I've also made one or two small changes to the base itself on the top side, which you will see once we ascend. Reaching the base, I've placed a few decorative items around this area, along with workbenches throughout the build. In this area, you'll find a saddler's workbench, a tinkerer's table, a casting table, and a carpenter's workbench. You'll also notice in the carpenter's hut that I've added stairs to access a platform that contains a horizontal elevator. This is designed so that you can quickly move resources from the northern side to the southern or vice versa, rather than having to slowly walk through the build if you're over encumbered. Heading into the middle of the base, there's a small artisan's hut on the right, along with a small cutout in the centre. I've chosen to remove these tiles to create a source of fresh water and also fish right in the middle of the base. The traps in the water will catch fish passively, making for an easy and cheap food source. Past the water source I've made a small alchemy lab with some planters for ingredients, and above this lab there is another planter area which has been left empty currently, so you can plant whichever ingredients you happen to need at any given time. Across from the planters is a small kitchen and social area for cooking meals and taking in the views. Reaching the southern side of the build, there's a small dismantling station under the stairs and some more workbenches around the corner for all your armour and weapon needs. The southern building provides a safe place to log in and out and also to store personal items. It's nothing too fancy but it does the job so you're not logging back onto a server in a dangerous location. It also has a balcony attached to the southern side which provides some nice views and I also chose to flatten the roof that I initially placed above this building to facilitate a medium sized wheel of pain. Given that this build is close to quite a few NPC hotspots, having the Wheel of Pain is a really good option to have so you can convert thralls quickly and easily.
Finally, the northern gateway allows for a clear path to the Great Dam, and I've placed a single stable out here to safely store your horse in so you can ride north and gather those much needed resources. And there we have it, an aqueduct PvE base in the Exiled Lands in Map Square G9. Thanks for watching, this is a video I've thought about doing a few times, as when I originally saw a build in this spot a little while ago, I liked it quite a lot. I hope you liked it too, and maybe you even choose to use it on your server. As always, you'll find all the links to my Twitch, Discord, Twitter, Patreon, and NordVPN discounts in the description below, along with credit for the music used in this video. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, I put out at least two videos a week, so there's always plenty of content to come. If you have any suggestions for future builds, I would love to hear them in the comments below. As always, a massive thanks to our patrons Sadialot, Randar, Connor, Blue Ivy, Velma, Torn, Eagle Rose, and Meryl224. Again, thank you very much for watching, take care, and I'll see you soon.